with so much data surrounding Bitcoin, it can sometimes feel overwhelming to know what metrics to focus on. Here we'll outline a simple strategy that sophisticated investors have used to accumulate more BTC and even outperform Bitcoin itself. So we'll get right into it here on the active address sentiment indicator chart we have here on Bitcoin Magazine Pro. Now this is an incredibly simple indicator. It looks a little bit complicated, but all it is doing is looking at the 28 day percentage change in the underlying price of Bitcoin, this orange line here, and then the 28 day active addresses on the network, the percentage change in that to actually kind of check the network utilization and almost a fundamental valuation to back up price increases or decreases in the Bitcoin price action. And then what we can do is if we remove that, we have this upper red boundary and this lower green boundary, which are just standard deviation lines of this 28 day percentage change in active addresses. So for the strategy we'll be covering today, this is the basis that we'll be using. And as we can see, as we just overlay this, what we're really looking for is crosses above and beneath Beneath these standard deviation bands. So for example, as Bitcoin was first rallying up here to into six figure territory last year, we could see we ran above this upper red standard deviation band, potentially indicating that Bitcoin's price had rallied maybe too fast and too high, considering how many people were actually utilizing the Bitcoin blockchain. So when we dip beneath these upper red deviation bands, we're actually taking these as sell signals. You don't want to sell immediately because Bitcoin can have sustained strength. If you just look here, we could see Bitcoin first cross this upper red deviation band around the low $90,000 region and actually continued running until we dipped beneath finally above $106,000. So you really need to take into consideration that just because Bitcoin is currently oversold doesn't mean it can't get a hell of a lot more oversold. And the same is true for the downside. If we look to when Bitcoin crosses back above these lower deviation bands, these are going to be entry signals for this very simple strategy. Now I said in the start, we're gonna be using this as a way to accumulate more Bitcoin and outperform Bitcoin itself. But one thing we need to acknowledge is if you look at Bitcoin, that's a pretty tough, tough ask. It's a pretty tall order to outperform something that has had a profitable day's percentage of over 98%. If you could have bought Bitcoin on any random day throughout its entire history and held until this point, there's over a 98% chance you're in profit. So. We've got a pretty high baseline to beat today. And one thing we do also need to acknowledge is if you're not someone that actually wants to actively sell Bitcoin, because a lot of people are just wanting to accumulate BTC, that's absolutely fine. You can take a dollar cost averaging approach and slightly tweak it to use the strategy we'll be discussing today and some other ones that we'll be covering as well later in this video to just accumulate more Bitcoin than just blind dollar cost averaging. Because one thing we can clearly see is this period of time when Bitcoin is a little bit overvalued, where maybe you don't want to be scaling in as aggressively. And there's times where Bitcoin's definitely at a bit of a discount, where maybe you want to buy a little bit more aggressively. But one thing we do need to look to as well is rather than just blindly relying on one indicator, which I would never suggest doing, is we need to actually combine a couple indicators. Now, I know I said at the start, we don't want to focus on too many metrics and have paralysis by analysis. So for this, it is literally just going to be two metrics we'll be looking towards. And the second one is the golden ratio multiplier. So what we can do is if we just remove all of them, apart from just the main orange 350 day moving average, we're going to be using this almost as a baseline for this strategy. If Bitcoin is above this, then we're allowed to take profit. We'll be able to dollar cost average in at any point, but we're not going to take any profit if we're beneath this because we can clearly see BTCs in a downtrend if we're beneath this practically one year moving average. So it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't give us the best bang for our buck to take profit, scale out, rotate out of Bitcoin when we're already in a bit of a bear market and a bit of a downtrend. So what we'll do is we'll go over to trading view here. Now, if you are a site subscriber, you'll gain access to trading view indicators as part of your Bitcoin Magazine Pro subscription as well. So you'll gain access to the active address sentiment indicator to do this type of analysis yourself. And one other thing I'd like to outline is all of these numbers are including a 0.1% trade fee, which is actually pretty high in the crypto markets and slippage as well. And we're just using $100 as the base amount. But the way we're actually going to be scaling into this is to be using 3% of our available capital to buy at every single one of these buy opportunities. So again, a very, very simple strategy. All we're looking towards is is to accumulate Bitcoin with 3% of our available capital once we cross above this low green deviation band and sell when we cross back beneath this upper red deviation band 
and we're above the 350 day moving average. So for example, if you just look to over here, we can see Bitcoin potentially crossed beneath this red deviation band, but was actually already in a bit of a downtrend. If we just look to this example here. So because we were already beneath this 350 day moving average, we didn't actually take profit at that point in time. And like I said, if you want to adapt this strategy so you're never actually taking profit on your positions, because again, we can see this isn't overfitted. This is far from optimal and efficient. We're taking profit down here at $10,000 before Bitcoin ran up to $60,000. And again, this should just be one piece of a bigger strategy as part of Confluence. But I'm really just trying to outline here that if you just use some very basic, simple metrics and just take a very data-driven approach, you can outperform the best performing asset in history. Now, I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous and unbelievable, but what I can do is just all the way back since we started this analysis in 2018, if I just remove all of this active address sentiment data and I just add on the buy and hold returns of Bitcoin. Now, these are in percentage gains. So we can see from 2018, if you would have bought and held to today, then you'd currently be sitting on somewhere around 550% profit. Now, if we just very quickly go back to Bitcoin Magazine Pro, what you can also acknowledge is if that if you were dollar cost averaging for the past eight years every day, it doesn't matter how much, we can use $50, we can use $1. What you can see is you'd have actually outperformed already by dollar cost averaging into the market. So this is the thing, dollar cost averaging in, removing the emotions, removing the biases, removing the internal difficulties that everyone experiences. It's not just you, institutions face this as well. If you look at markets such as equities and the S&P 500 having these big blow off tops before big global recessions and gold, a recent rally of tens of trillions of dollars to the upside before a big blow off top. Everyone's susceptible to feeling these emotions and on-chain data is really just mass psychology quantified. But what we can do is if we strip out those external noises, the content that we're seeing on social media that may be giving us internal biases, the personal fear and greed that we do feel throughout the market and just focus on a data-driven approach, it's actually fairly achievable to outperform Bitcoin. And again, this isn't taking profit. This is just blind dollar cost averaging on a daily basis to accumulate as much BTC as possible, which is something that you could use this strategy for. But again, what I'm gonna do is add on the equity percentage of implementing this active address sentiment indicator and golden ratio multiple strategy so we can actually compare. Now what we can see as I've added that on, there are periods of time where the realized profit of this strategy is actually lower than that of buying and holding Bitcoin. Bitcoin. There's times when during the previous bull market, for example, we rallied far above the returns of this strategy. But that's not really where this strategy really outperforms. You see, the biggest influencing factor on actually increasing your profitability long term is limiting drawdowns, reducing losses and compounding gains to the upside. So what we can see is if we scroll all the way across, it might be a little bit difficult for you to see. So what I'll do is I'll just add labels on here and I'll just move the data slightly so you can actually see Oops, wrong button. If I just move the data so you can see the values that we're actually looking at, there we go. You can see that buy and hold 543% and this strategy 640%. So about a 100% difference. But I know you're thinking, I have to pay taxes on my gains. If I bought Bitcoin and held, then I'd never actually experience these taxes and maybe I'm not actually outperforming at that point. That's not a big enough difference. What you need to acknowledge is this green line is the realized profit. If we actually take into account the fact that we've been actively buying Bitcoin very aggressively and all of the dips through this bull market, we're actually still holding a lot of Bitcoin in unrealized profit. So if we add that onto the metric as well, then we can see this massively increases the profit percentage to over 865%, over a 300% outperformance. And again, this is just scaling in with 3% of your capital and actually selling 3% of your Bitcoin stack every time you get one of these signals. So it's an incredibly simple strategy to implement, but we can take this one step further again. Here, what I've done is change to the Ethereum chart. So I know we're Bitcoin Magazine Pro. I know a lot of people are going to hate this, but a lot of people in the industry are invested in altcoins and that's absolutely fine. I have nothing wrong with that. But one thing you need to acknowledge is almost every crypto asset is very strongly correlated to Bitcoin. If we're seeing Bitcoin in a bear cycle, it's incredibly unlikely that we're going to see altcoins doing well. And the same is true for the upside. If Bitcoin's doing well, then it's likely that other assets, more volatile, more speculative assets, are also going to have the potential to do quite well as well. And what we can see here, just the exact same strategy, the exact same data we used before, buy and hold Ethereum, only 288% returns, but implementing this strategy, 
678% returns. You have outperformed buy and hold Ethereum by around 400% since 2018. So this doesn't just work on Bitcoin. And like I said, this isn't something that just needs to be implemented using the active address sentiment indicator. In fact, we've done this type of analysis many, many times before. This was using ETF data to actually strategically outperform based on ETF inflows and outflows. In this chart, we're using the fear and greed index, which outperformed outright buy and hold by just buying when there's extreme fear in the market and selling when there's extreme greed in the market. And again, in this one, we were looking at the short-term holder MVRV, which once again outperformed buy and hold, blind dollar cost averaging. So strategically dollar cost averaging into the market, regardless of what tools you use. And especially if you can look for confluence across multiple metrics, which historically have been incredibly accurate, then there's an incredibly high probability that you can not only outperform buy and hold and normal dollar cost averaging into the market, but you're gonna outperform a vast majority of other investors and it's gonna be a hell of a lot simpler than whatever they're doing. So just to summarize, buying Bitcoin and holding does incredibly well. Like we could see with the profitable days chart, over 98% of Bitcoin's entire history, you could have bought and held today and you'd have been in a profit, which isn't too bad. But dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin over the past eight years or so has actually provided even more profit and takes that stress of having to bulk buy and being cautious of stressful if whether you're buying at the lows or if it's at the highs. And also you might not have all your capital at once. So dollar cost averaging into the market might even be a better approach. But what we can say is strategic dollar cost averaging into the market and potentially out of the market as well if you did want to take profit some of us have bills to pay so it's not a bad thing if you need to scale out just a few percent here and there what we can see is this approach has worked exceptionally well and outperformed both buy and hold and blind dollar cost averaging in and when we formulate a data-driven approach to investing that removes the emotions and decision-making process that can be both internally and externally influenced, we've all been there it's very hard to look on social media and remain cautious and remain unbiased remain level-headed when everyone's getting incredibly carried away both to the upside and the downside so implementing a very simple data-driven approach like this can outperform in a very simple manner especially when you look through confluence through multiple different metrics like we did today with the active address sentiment indicator and the golden ratio multiple and again shameless shill if you are a site subscriber not only do you get access to the trading room indicators to do this but also the email alerts as well which are a massive lifesaver so when the active address sentiment indicator actually flashes you'll know immediately you're not going to have to even check the charts every single day so if you like this video and all the content we discussed then please visit bitcoinmagazinepro.com where again you can check out all the resources we discussed today as well as many many more get api access trading view indicators industry reports all that good stuff all for a fraction of the standard industry price and as always let me know what your thoughts are on potentially implementing a strategic dollar cost averaging approach like we outlined today or let me know if there's any of the metrics that you're using in your own strategy that may perform even better than this one i look forward to reading and replying to them thank you all very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one